Welcome back to episode 5 of Smallish Zoo. We got a good one for you today as we start on our Africa area. However, before we get into that, I want to say thank you to you guys. And my way of doing that is I'm going to be giving away three copies of Planet Zoo. To enter, all you have to do is subscribe to this channel, leave a like and comment on this video, and that's it. I'll be picking three people at random at the start of the next video. So today we start off with a time lapse, two hours condensed into two minutes as we build our Africa area. Now kind of like we had the Arctic village in the Arctic area, we've got a sort of African area where we're gonna have some shops and stuff like that as well. And I decided to make it along this nice little straight bit here, adding in some toilets, obviously, right now because people need to poo and pee. It's just a pact of life. And I'd never really built with the African theme buildings before so I was kind of struggling as you can see messing around adding lots of different things on at different points throughout this recording but I slowly started to get the hang of it and I love how many props and stuff there are in the African theme. It's just amazing. Also I was messing around ages here trying to make a fountain before eventually giving up. There's no way to make a good fountain that's small. They, they have to be massive and that's it. So the aim of this area is to be the central hub of Africa. We're going to have like lots of different shops here, mainly food and drink as that is what the demand is at the moment is food and drink and that's about it. But hey, you never know, we may throw in a souvenir shop as well because we, we've only got one I think in the park in the other section or there might be two, I can't remember. And I'm really loving this path. I don't know what it is about it. It's just so colourful and the whole African theme is just so amazingly colourful. I love it. I just... I just can't get enough of it. And I really like this building I built here. It's kind of got like a path going through the middle of it. And then there's sort of like this canopy over the top. A few hanging baskets and stuff. You'll see when I show you around a bit later. And just throwing in all these props all over the place because they just look so good. And then obviously I added in some seats for people to sit down. As well as messing around with the path for ages. Trying to get a nice curve here. Which I finally did, I will add. So I can sort of separate off from the main sort of circular square thing there. That makes no sense circular square as I built this really circular building here which I is, this is going crazy it's just sped up so much I'm sure you can kind of see what's happening but some things here go really quick I'm sorry about that but otherwise it was two hours of building which you don't want to see and it will just be nothing I can't talk for two hours it'll be silence okay but I added in some nature here and added in some fences just building up to the start of the area and I think this place is starting to look really good and I've got big ideas for what's going to be on the left hand side when you come in you'll see in a second as we move on to the live comment tree. Hey Joel, take it over. So here's what it looks like from this level as you can see. We've got this little lake on the right here which is very cute, nice little pond. And on the left we have our toilets because obviously we need some toilets in this area as the closest ones are quite far away over here. So we want to keep people in this area over here. That bit over there, by the way, is just leading off to the staff area, as you can see. Next to the toilets, we've got a shop, the Pip Shot Juice one. And then we've got a Hats Fantastic over here as well. And then we've got this cute little area here where it's sort of underneath this canopy, as you can see. And there's a, like, shop there as well. I think it's a Monsieur Fritz. French in an African area. I know. And then also we've got a little seating area here. And then round the back, we've got this really funky looking building with a cosmic cow ice cream in it. So there's two food shops and one drink shop. I might change this to a drink shop if the demand is there. But I think this area is really cute. And I'm really excited to, for people to start getting in here. And because we've got one, two, three, four new shops, it means we've got four new employees we need to name. So we've got Christine Stewart, Sophie Turner, Chris Hemsworth, and of course Meryl Streep. But we're not going to actually click play yet because obviously there's no reason for people to come over here other than the food and drink. We're going to start on our new enclosure which I mentioned. And that's going to go in this area here. And I did put a poll up last episode and these are all the animals here. As you can see that are compatible with each other. So we're just going to get a load of these animals, build an enclosure for these guys. I have no idea how big it's going to need to be, but I have a feeling it's going to be pretty big. Let's just build it and see what happens. Now, I've never built an enclosure like this before, so it was kind of a tricky new challenge for me, and I was struggling a bit, I'm not going to lie. And someone actually told me in the comments that a lot of these animals get quite shy, so you need, like, one-way glass. So I tried to design my own sort of barrier to go around the edge. It's only for part of it, and I kind of got this idea from my friend Scott. I saw him do it on the stream, and I was like, hmm... I could steal that, so I stole it, although I kind of made up the design myself. Also, this enclosure comes very close to the staff area, so I decided
I had to decorate one of the staff buildings uh, to make it look like it's part of the enclosure. And I knew that I wanted a sort of raised bit for people to view the animals from. And you can see me messing around here a lot until eventually I settled on these two very small little platforms here, which don't have the glass around it, which I'm a bit worried about. So I'm thinking maybe we'll test it out. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work, but it might work. You never know. But if the animals get shy and they hate it, then I'll obviously put glass around there and fix that issue. But I realized at this point that I didn't really know what the animals needed. So I was just like, hmm, okay, let's go in game and sort of figure this out and work out what we're going to do with the rest of this enclosure. As I like this part, but I'm not sure about the rest. So here's my dilemma. Is this going to be enough space? So far we've got 7,000 roughly. And obviously this is not complete. I've just roughly done around this bit here sort of thing. And this bit here is not complete either. So what I'm going to do is add one of each animal. See if one is getting close to the space and two if they need hard shelter on three if they need water and how much of each I will need. So let's start with an African buffalo. Oh my gosh, the genetics. I don't, I can't afford the other one. So she will have to do. Same with the black wildebeest. Gosh, this is going to be a pain to like research all these at once. I think I'm going to remove them and then add them in one by one once I've seen their needs. Common ostrich. Am I going to need like 10 keepers for this thing as well? You know what? I'm not even going to add all of them in. I'm going to get the ones that I want. Like a plain zebra. I want one of these. And I want giraffes. And that's probably it. Oh, now to unpause the moment of truth. Oh, we also need to hire a keeper to work on this. And this keeper can be Liam Hemsworth. I've also hired another mechanic. James Cameron. Yes. And let's unpause. So here come the animals. They're nearly all in now. Wait, how the heck did this baby wolf get out? What? Did it just teleport through a wall? Like, I don't get how it's just on the other side of this. It says it should be able to get out. Weird. Anyway, oh my gosh, the animals are all just running around like mad. So giraffes require hard shelter. Ostriches don't. Zebras require hard shelter. Buffaloes don't. I think those are all the animals. Wait, there's another one over here. Black wildebeest do. Right, so we're going to need some hard shelter. Store them all away for now. We don't need them. And it's starting to snow and I completely forgot that I'm going to have to add in some heaters. Tickets are underpriced though, so we can put those up. Emberly here's matured and we might be able to sell them for a decent amount. They're a good doll sheep. Look at those jeans. I have no idea how much she's worth. It's really hard to work it out. I'm just going to put it for like 1,000 and hope she sells. 1,500, let's be cheeky. There we go. People are actually using the African area right now just for food and drink. But there's no animals to see. The enclosures are empty. Another death. Another reindeer. Sad times. And a wolf has died. What the heck, man? Sad times. Everyone's dying. We've got our first baby elephant. Very cute. I'm just waiting for this rain to go away so that we can continue our enclosure. There we go. Let's continue on and make this actually decent. Which is a lot trickier than it sounds as this is such a huge enclosure to do some like massive amounts of detailing on it is quite tricky. But I started to add in spots where you can put some screens up with information and then I got to work on a big hard shelter. Now in my mind that this was like this is going to be big, it's going to be tall, giraffes are going to be able to use it. And I spent probably about 30 minutes to an hour building this thing and then I tried it and yeah. Giraffes hate it. They, they won't go in it. I don't know why. Maybe it's just not tall enough, the little entrance bit. So uh, that's a shame. But oh well, other animals can use it because I quite like the design of this build. Although it is massive and I normally hate building massive things, I've, I quite liked it. I think it looked pretty cool. Then I wanted to change that center area a little bit because it just looks not very good. And instead of going down and under is what I was trying to do, I decided to build my own custom roof. I've seen some other people do this in Planet Zoo videos, so I thought I'd give it a go myself. And it actually turned out really well. It looks really good. I'm really shocked and surprised that I actually managed to build that, but I'm happy I did. And the whole central area is slightly different because it is curved and the bits I was using before were quite straight. So I made this sort of custom area again with these these little plank bits here plus some lights on top of them so when it's at night time it looks really cool this area and also a little central bit as well to add some screens on and one big problem I did have with this enclosure was just trying to get power to it and also add those water treatment units as well and I think I added in about two more power units around this place just to give
massive power to the screens and the heaters and stuff like that. But here you can see me adding some more details on this final building here. And then I sort of started to like work out where the paths were gonna go around this area. I kept it kind of straight and flat because I already spent a long time building the curved center little bit in the middle. And the enclosure ended up being about 7,000 square meters, I'm pretty sure. Although that did change when I started adding in the ponds, as you can see now, obviously some of these guys need water. So I just put in a little tiny little pondy bit here, which is plenty for all the animals. This is the point here where I realized the giraffes don't like the hard shelter. So I started experimenting to see how much height they needed and how much shelter they needed. And it turns out it is quite a lot. So I actually ended up building this massive enclosure here. I built something quite similar to the sort of like the ones you can spawn in from the habitat mode. And yeah, it wasn't big enough. So we had to build another one later on as well. But at this point I was sort of just like adding in all the sort of like enrichment items and stuff like that, adding in some plants. And I started to decorate this enclosure to make it actually look nice and not just a big flat grain plains area. Lots of rocks, lots Lots of logs, lots of plants and stuff. Not too many though, because these guys don't love a load of plants, but enough to make it look nice and natural, which I think I ended up doing as you'll see a bit later on. Here's the other hard shelter I was talking about. Very similar style to the other one, except this one's more on a corner. It's right by the entrance for the keeper hut, so it kind of hides away the keeper entrance, which I really liked as well. Lots of vines and lights on these things as well. And I worked out all in all, this enclosure has taken me about seven or eight hours just to build one enclosure, which is mental. After I finished, I went through and bought loads of new animals and I'm gonna cut some live gameplay now as you can see them entering the zoo. So all the animals have been adopted. Let's get ready to release them. This is probably gonna be pretty mad. Here they all come. Oh my gosh, there's so many of them. I haven't set up any donation boards. People are gonna start coming. Oh, signs. Okay, we should be all donation boxed up now. Let's have a look. Here come all the animals. Woo! We've got so many in here. It should hopefully be enough space. Let's find out how they're doing. Nutrition's down, but that's about it. Yes, they're still arriving. We literally bought so many. It's kind of ridiculous. Are we going to start losing money? That's the question. Not yet. Guess think the tickets are underpriced. Okay, put those up. We have just added about 30 animals to the zoo. Yes, look at all the people using the central area. Perfect. And up here as well. All the shops are shut though. Why are all the shops shut? This one isn't though. People are using this area here. Nice. People even sat down at the picnic benches. Oh my gosh, all this research coming in. Okay, so the space looks like it's actually pretty good in all of these, which is perfect. We're not losing money. We're actually going up in money. Oh my gosh, this is so good. This is worth it. Look at that for a view, man. That's so good. We're up to nearly 3,000 people. This is my biggest zoo ever. We're making so much money. Like, seriously. We're, I just managed to shut up. We're making loads of money off these guys. That's great. Wow. This enclosure has been a massive success. Have to... <laughs> how long it's taken me. I've been working on this for probably about 10 hours in total now. I'm so glad it's a success. We're expecting offspring. This is going to be impossible to manage. Oh my gosh. But I don't care. It's worth it. Look at it on the map. That enclosure is nearly the same size as the entire Arctic Zoo. Mental. I kind of neglected the other zoo and all the animals are blooming dying. Wait. Oh, yeah, it's dead. High amounts of litter. I forgot to put any bins in over here. It's going to be all over here. Oh, my gosh. Maybe it's time we hired another caretaker as well. We've got three so far. We'll plot one down here. Male YouTuber, David Dobrik. Sorted. Yes. View the giraffes from here. Yes. Look at those giraffes. What a viewing platform. So there you have it, guys. That's going to be it for this episode of Planet Zoo. Now it's up to you guys on what you want to see next. I'll put a list in a poll in the top right now. Vote on which animal enclosure you'd like to see. Make sure to leave a like and comment to enter that competition. And I shall see you another time. Goodbye.